part 143 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the differences between HTTP GET and HTTP POST methods. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is the most common protocol used for communication between a web server and a client. For example, to request the homepage of Prajim Technologies website, we would type this URL prajimtech.com for slash home.aspx and then once I hit enter, we are issuing a GET request for the home page of Prajim Technologies. Now within this address bar of Google Chrome, I can't see the protocol that is used. But then if I copy that address and paste that into a notepad, notice that we are using HTTP protocol. So to establish the communication between the client, that is the browser on this laptop, and Prajim Technologies web server. And this HTTP protocol has got two common methods that is HTTP GET and HTTP POST which are used to establish the communication between the client and the web server. So in this video we'll understand when do we actually use HTTP GET and when do we use HTTP POST and when these when are these requests raised. Okay, so this GET request is generally used to get data from the web server, whereas a POST request is generally used to submit or post data to the server. For example, um, let's say I want to submit feedback about a trainer. I click on this feedback link on Prajim Technologies website. So we are issuing a GET request to that page. And then obviously I have this form here where I can fill in the feedback about a trainer. And then once I click the submit button, what are we doing? We are submitting the data that we entered on this form to Prajim Technologies web server. So we are posting the data to the server. Let's actually understand this get and post request with an example. So here I have an ASP.NET web applications project and then on this web form 1.aspx I have three text boxes where we can enter first name, last name and email and then a submit button. And within the button click event handler what are we doing? We are retrieving the details that the user has submitted and then we are appending the values within those text boxes as query strings and we are issuing a redirect to web form 2.aspx and within web form 2 I have three label controls and within the page load event of this web form 2 we are retrieving you know the data from the query strings and then setting that data as the text for the respective label controls okay so now when we actually navigate to you know when we type this URL web forms demo is the name of the project web form 1.aspx and once I hit enter what are we doing? We are issuing a GET request for this web form 1.aspx. But before we do that, let me fire up this Fiddler. Okay, so Fiddler is a web debugging tool. So web application debugger, very useful in order to debug and troubleshoot production issues. Okay, now if you want to download this tool, it can be downloaded from this URL. I'll have this link available on my blog in case if you need it. All right, now let's go back to the browser. And then look at this, webform1.aspx, you know, I typed that in the address bar and once I hit enter, we are issuing a GET request to this webform1.aspx. Actually, let's clear all the traffic that we have here and then issue another GET request. So let's go to Fiddler, look at that. So there is a request for webform1.aspx and look at the method that was used. What is the method? A GET method. GET request is issued to the web server. Okay, and now we have webform1.aspx, so let me fill in some data. And then once we click the submit button, what are we doing? We are going to post this data. Look at this, within the URL, we don't have anything. Now once we click the submit button, what's going to happen? This form will be posted or submitted to the server. And this data needs to be transmitted to the server. Okay, so once I click submit, within the server, what did we do? I mean, we submitted this data to the server and on the server side, within the button click event handler, we are retrieving the submitted data and then we are appending that to um, webform2.aspx page as query strings and then we are redirecting the user to that page. Okay, so basically, if you look at the second request that's captured within Fiddler, on webform1.aspx when we clicked on that button look at that a post request 
and then obviously the data that we have entered on that web form need to be sent to the server so how was the data sent to the server it was sent as part of the body so here you know this is the header and then here whatever you see here is the body of that request and within the body if you scroll to the right you can actually see this txt first name which is nothing but the id of that text box you know first name text box and then you have Prajim, that's what we entered as the first name. Similarly, we have txt last name and the value is tech and then email as well. Okay, so basically when we use post request, the data is sent, you know, using the HTTP message body. And then within the button click event, we are, you know, we are programmatically redirecting to webform 2.aspx. So this redirect issues a get request to webform 2. So here within Fiddler, if I select that, look at that, the request is actually a GET request. So to summarize, a GET request is generally used to get data from the web server. And a GET request is generally issued when you click on a hyperlink or when response.redirect statement is executed or when you type a URL in the address bar and hit enter, a GET request is generally issued. And a POST request is used to submit data to the server or for example, you know, you might have seen many web applications where you fill in some details and then once you click on send email button it's going to send an email so for things like that we use post request to submit data to send email etc and a post request is generally raised when you click on a submit button or if you have a drop down list for example on an asp.net web form and if you have set auto post back property to true and then when you change the selection within the drop-down list, what happens? The web form will be posted back to the server. So another request is sent. And what request is that? It's a POST request. All right, now let's look at the differences between a GET and POST methods. So GET method appends data to the URL. Now a classic example is here. Look at this. This web form to what, we, what is the responsibility of this web form to? you give it some data and then it's going to display that within these label controls but where is it done it's done on the server side meaning this first name last name and email has to be sent somehow to the server and how are we sending this data by at appending it to the URL and this is a get request right because in Fiddler if you notice the request for web form 2 you know we are getting this web form 2 because within code programmatically we are redirecting the user to webform2.aspx so that has issued a get request but then for that webform to do its job we need to provide it some data and how are we doing that by appending that to the url on the server side we retrieve the data from the query strings and then display within the label controls so basically get method appends data to the url whereas with post method data can either be appended to the url or sent in the message body and we have seen an example of that you know on web form 1 when we fill those details first name last name email and then once we click the submit button what are we doing we are issuing a post request and this data is sent to the server as part of the message body as get requests rely on the query string so to send data to the server obviously there is a length restriction so here we have a get request and we are sending this data to the server using query strings so there is length restriction um, you know on the URL which means there is a length restriction on the amount of data uh, that can be transmitted using a get request but with post we don't have that issue because post uses message body the HTTP message body to send data and an important point to keep in mind is that while it is possible to change the state of data in database using get request, they should only be used to retrieve data and not to change the state. So for example, if you look at this page load event on a web form, this page load event is executed you know, both when a get and a post request is issued. And there's nothing stopping you from writing code here within the page load event, something like this. If not is post back, what does this mean? This means if the request that is coming in is a get request, you know, you can write any code here. For example, I can write code here to go and delete data that is present in a database. Okay, so basically we shouldn't be doing that. 
a get request should only be used to retrieve data and not to change the state in any way. Anytime you want to change something, you know, always do that using a POST request. In ASP.NET Web Forms, it's very easy to check whether if a request is a GET or a POST on, a, on the server side. How do we do that? Using isPostBack property. So, you know, the name itself is self-explanatory. isPostBack, look at that. What is it returning? Boolean, true or false. If that returns true, then we know it's a POSTBACK request. If it returns false, then we know it's a GET request. But then in ASP.NET MVC, we don't have this property. This ASP postback property is the property of a web form, you know, of this page class. We don't have, you know, concept of uh, pages and uh, events within ASP.NET web forms, uh, sorry, ASP.NET MVC. And hence, we don't have this ease postback property within ASP.NET MVC applications. So in our next video, we'll actually discuss how to check if the request method is a GET or a POST in ASP.NET MVC application. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.